for the top annual Tabumbeki Africa Day lecture will be held on Friday. And of course, it's held by the Tabumbeki African School of Public and International Affairs alongside the University of South Africa. A theme for this year's lecture is the African Union at 20. And it will be delivered by the scholar and academic Professor Toyin Falola. For more on this, we're joined by the chairperson of the Board of Trustees at the Tabombeki Foundation, Dr. Geraldine Fraser Mulageti. Geraldine, good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time tonight. You know, it's interesting because just listening to that clip of uh, the EFF leader, Julius Malema, and thinking about really the evolution of this day, Africa Day, beginning as Africa, African Liberation Day to just being Africa Day. It says a lot about the steps and the strides that uh, this continent has made to gain true liberation. But I suppose the question is whether or not, you know, we are liberated. Thank you. Good evening, Kathy, and your listeners. Um, that is the big question. And that's why we are quite, uh, I think it's quite a gift to us that we have Professor Toyan, Toyan Falula uh, presenting this Africa, the African Union at 20 lecture on Friday the 27th. Because he is, as you say, say one of the preeminent scholars on this continent. And let me raise one of the issues that immediately comes to mind. And it, it feeds directly out of the vision of President Thabo Mbeki and the leadership, the leadership at the time of the launch of the African Union itself. And, and one part of that was vision. So allow me to just uh, quote and read a short text from him. When he, on uh, the 22nd of September 2020, said, Africa could be suffering from a leadership deficit, definitely, certainly at the cancerous rate, more than its trade deficit. Few still exist that beacon the impeccable character makeup of the African personality, close quotes. And this was in the context of him talking about the Tabumbeki African School of Public and International Affairs and the importance of the role. But let's come to the specific of the lecture itself. Um, this particular le lecture will be unpacking what the challenges are that we've confronted over this period and especially against the background that the AU was formed and had identified amongst its objectives, and let me read that, the achievement of greater unity and solidarity among and uh, between African countries and the people of Africa, the acceleration of political and economic, in, uh, socioeconomic integration of the continent and the promotion of peace, security, and stability on the continent. Now we can go on, on the, uh, go on and talk about uh, this particular aspect. And I believe that when we look at the reality confronting um, people on the African con uh, continent, if we look at the reality confronting countries and the fact that 20 years down the line, we have uh, seen at least seven coup d'etats. Mm -hmm. Now, this is quite extraordinary that it should happen 20 years after the founding of the AU. Because remember, the AU is built on the organization of African unity itself. The second issue is that we've seen conflicts in parts of the continent like Ethiopia, and, and elsewhere, I mean, we, we just need to look around. We also see intra-country challenges. We see growing inequalities on the continent. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that there has not been positive movements. And I can mention one and then talk to PACE again. I mean, you look at the whole African Continental Free Trade Agreement. We see this as part of the socioeconomic integration of the continent. 
And this fits into the larger theme of ensuring the unity of the African people through trade unity between countries as well. But in spite of the fact that um, we have uh, since 2019 seen the ratification of the um, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, work that had to start in 2020 did not happen. And of course, the view would be that this was due to COVID. But I think the pace at which it should happen, especially since we want to unlock um, at least three trillion US dollars plus uh, um, trade out of this agreement, shows the need for clear political vision. And I think sadly, two decades since the founding of the AU, we don't necessarily see the cohesive uh, political vision required. We also don't get a sense of the accountability of leaders within countries and even uh, the involvement and engagement mm. of continental leadership to the levels required. But let me pause and let me say Happy Africa Day, Kathy. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Geraldine. You know, I just wanted to talk about this vision of an integrated, prosperous and, and peaceful Africa. It's almost impossible to get there without leadership, without good governance. And one of the things you've highlighted is what many scholars have termed a decline or a retreat of democracy on the African continent. Why do you think that has been, and, and the role of the African Union, especially in holding those governments accountable? Because we see the coup d'etats, but we hear almost nothing from the organization. Look, um, I've, I've spoken about leadership in more than one context, and I've also done so by, by referring to Prof. Balula himself. And I, I do want to say that as we talk about leadership, you also need to talk about strong institutions and whether they are the necessary institutions. And with the formation of the union, there was, uh, you know, 15 bodies were set up. And amongst them was, of course, NEPAD, um, there was the African Peer Review Mechanism, etc. Subsequently, the African Union has also looked at reframing these bodies in a manner to make it more effective. And they put in place what was called the African Governance Architecture. And my understanding was that it was precisely intended to strengthen what you referred to, stronger governance, um, ensuring that there is uh, a, a greater entrenchment of democracy, et cetera. But none of this will happen if there is not the visionary leadership required across the continent. It also will not be effective if the African Union itself and the African Union Commission doesn't really take the leadership required and assert its role in unison with uh, the leadership on this continent. Because after all, the heads of state and government form part of the leadership um, and, and head, uh, are the political heads to the African Union Commission. So, I believe that Professor Falula will do quite a critical and dispassionate assessment on why we are seeing this dearth of leadership. Mm. And is it in part because uh, there's not the required accountability in country and also at the regional level? So I think let's watch on Friday, let's listen virtually. And, and hear what this eminent uh, intellect, African intellectual will raise. But I think it also calls on 
all Africans, uh, those on the continent and in the diaspora, and in particular our intellectuals to come to the fore. Very interesting to hear the EFF recognize uh, Haiti and the reality that this was uh, the first, that was where the slaves uh, had freed themselves and created the first liberated republic. And then in the end, they had to pay their colonizers, repay their colonizers for their liberation. And hence, Haiti is in the dire straits that they are in today as well. Uh, I want to end off w with this, Geraldine. Um, when we look at Agenda 2063, part of the roadmap to get, uh, to get us there from a continental view speaks about uh, you know, a confederation of African states, at least by around uh, 2051. And yet, when we look at even some of the internal issues that we're facing in a country like South Africa, where there is growing anti-foreigner sentiment and, you know, migration is a big issue facing countries and how it is dealt with on, a, uh, on an individual country level seems to be uh, one of the things that will be a growing challenge going forward. I mean, do you think that we will get there if there isn't consensus, even uh, uh, if there isn't consensus and accountability uh, amongst leaders about, number one, some of the problems that are taking place within their own countries the inability to solve them and how that is contributing more broadly uh, to the issues that we're facing? I think very clearly, if there's not a common view, a common vision and a clear plan on how to, de to, how to ensure integration, it is not going to happen at the pace required. The second issue I'd like to raise quite quickly is that uh, the African Union Development Agency, which is what NEPAT has morphed into, uh, the purpose of NEP NEPAT was to look at uh, economic and infrastructure development on the continent. And we've seen quite big initiatives uh, to this end, and some are more successful than others when you look at uh, these infrastructure initiatives. But again, where you see the lag, it's due to the absence of human capital in instances, uh, the absence to financing um, as well. But the big issue is the political will and drive to support initiatives. So coming back to the point you raised around challenges even within South Africa, you see, the reality is that South Africa, as in many African countries, have, has very high levels of unemployment. I mean, we're talking at about the higher 30% uh, plus. It's between 38% um, and 40 upwards. Now, if you have high levels of unemployment, it's very easy for populist leaders to play to the plight of unemployed people and to feed into what is quite a right-wing global trend of anti-migration. Because at the end of the day, whether you're looking at an African continental free trade agreement or you're looking at economic growth and huge projects across the African continent, that should allow for the mobility legally of Africans across the continent. Because what you've described as anti-foreign sentiment is not so much anti-foreign sentiment, but almost anti, it's almost a form of Afrophobia. And we know that uh, we should work together to make a change. And here, sure. my emphasis is about facilitating the movement of goods and people across the continent in the best way possible. But it requires leadership. Right. And leadership who won't just be populist. Thank you, Kathy. Geraldine, we're going to have to leave it there for tonight. Thank you for your time, Dr. Uh, Geraldine Fraser Mulikete. She's the chairperson of the Board of Trustees at the Tabombegi.